What's up guys, welcome to Vintage Genetics, where it is all about classic bodybuilding. Today is going to be a back day, and before a back day, I like to take a pre-workout. Pretty much on any workout, I like to take a pre-workout, just, first of all, for the placebo effect, which actually does work, but also, mostly, because of the ingredients inside the pre-workout, giving you more of a pump, better oxygen delivery to the muscles, throughout the blood, and it just feels amazing to have that boost of energy in the workout. So, we are going to be using the unfinished pre-workout by Jack Factory. Flavor, white cherry. This tastes amazing. So, and the nice thing about this is the scoop is very big. So, you only have to take one big scoop of 30 grams, put it in here. But hey, we are not done yet because we are going to put some Himalayan pink salt in there, but there's something off of this color. It's not really pink because this is Norwegian salted Himalayan pink salt. So it tastes a little different. We're gonna put in a couple of grinds anyway. And you can smell the smokiness already. Actually meant for like a salmon meal, but hey, it can go with a pre workout as well. So shake it up. And then all of in here are clinically dosed ingredients, proven ingredients that actually work to get you through the workout. <clears throat> so right after taking the pre-workout, I like to make my intra work of nutrition. Two shaker cups. This is pomegranate juice. So if you can see this, this has 14 grams of carbs per 100 mils. So I like to put around 200 mils in here, a little more to get around uh, 30 grams of carbs. And pomegranate juice, if you saw my video regarding what the best intra workout is, it is not a supplement, it is this right here. This contains carbs, it contains compounds that will add nitric oxide to your blood, better blood flow, a better pump, but most importantly, it's good for the heart. And a lot of bodybuilders who are heavy have trouble with heart health. And this, every single day, every single workout will help you a whole lot. So that's the base of the intro workout. And then we always add some EAAs because, you know, the flavor of this is not really... Well, it's doable, but I also like to use, for example, beetroot juice on other days. And this tastes a little less incredible, so... Adding this with the flavor peach mango is way more incredible. So what I do is I take like three quarters of a scoop in both of them, like this. That already enhances the flavor a whole lot. What I do then is add some creatine. Creatine is actually better absorbed by contractile tissue, so if the tissue is actually Contracting, which means muscle contractions throughout the workouts, will help absorb creatine within muscle cells. And then we have some Hydro Surge, Hydra Surge, also an incredible flavor, orange mango. This has a very strong flavor, so even if you don't add the EAAs, just adding this is more than enough to flavor your drink. It's what I used to do in Mexico when I was, you know, training and sweating a whole lot because there are electrolytes in here helping you keeping your electrolytes balanced with the workout. And then the last thing is L-carnitine. This will help make your, um, your anabolic receptors more sensitive, but also help burn extra fat. It always has been kind of a... A belief that L-carnitine doesn't do anything because your body is already producing it from amino acids, what from what you eat. But taking extra actually does help metabolize fatty acids. So I just take the capsules, put out the powder inside the drinks, and that's the uh, intro workout finished, guys. Okay, guys, now it's time to train the back. The first move of the assisted pull-ups. We're going to use a nice technique, which you'll see in a minute, allowing for a neutral grip. So let's do this and work in the mats. So we are doing the assisted pull-up and I'm using the uh, technique with the handles, which means that I can apply a more neutral grip with my arms, with my hands, of course. 
allowing for a more natural motion up and down. I don't like the supinated or the uh, underhand grip here because it will target the biceps more, the forearms more, and here you can really only feel the lats. What you really want to focus on is pull with the elbow and let the body, the upper body, move in its natural position, which is very different compared to a lat pull down. The motion may seem similar, but the feeling is very different for sure. Time for the second work set, guys. Less weight. Trying to go for a little more reps this time. Let's do it. Now I like to do a couple of uh, sets on this assisted pull-up. I did four or three sets actually here, at least three working sets because this is actually the only pull-down exercise I am doing. Yes, it's called a pull-up, but normally if you pull something uh, vertically, we call it a pull-down movement. And the difference between a pull-down and a row is of course whether you're mainly working the width or the thickness. Now you will get the width if you do proper uh, pull down movements, but you can't really get the thickness if you don't do proper rows. So that's why I like to emphasize on the rows a bit more and the pull down just a bit less because for me, the back width will never be a problem, but the back thickness can never be thick enough. guys it's time for the next movement after a pull down movement such as the assisted pull up i like to do a rowing movement and from there two to three more this is one of my favorites it allows me to really brace myself it's pretty safe for the lower back if you don't swing back and forth and you can really get a very good squeeze at the back so let's warm up so now we're just going to do the seated row, the medium grip width, just a couple of warm-up sets before starting with the actual working sets. It was at this moment that he knew he fucked up. Oh, oh, oh. Whoa, whoa. That made me feel. Oh, you will. Take two. So basically what happened there is one of the snap hooks attached to one of the two cables basically was released. So nothing actually broke, but one of those hooks wasn't attached properly, which is why it is so incredibly important to keep checking whether it is really attached because I could have injured myself here. I've really not had any kind of accidents happen in a gym ever, but sometimes something very simple like this can cause a major injury. I know of a professional bodybuilder a couple of years ago, he was doing a lat pull down and then it snapped as well, but then the cable itself, I believe snapped and uh, you know, the bar actually hit his head and caused a concussion. So third burning set guys. Right now I'm doing three warring sets for uh, the movements, but I make sure to go all the way to failure, technical failure, minimizing fatigue, systemic fatigue, but maximizing the stimulus to fatigue ratio. So what I mean with stimulus to fatigue ratio, it might sound like a boring term and you don't want to think about that when working out, but what it really means is that you have to keep the reps as clean as possible because if it's not clean, the subtle different movements will cause unnecessary fatigue that does not build muscle. Okay guys, we're going to do a unilateral movement. One cable putting it on a height that the cable stays straight as you pull it for the maximum efficiency of pulling the weight with your muscle, of course. So we're gonna grab a handle now and do the unilateral movement. All right, so now I'm about to do a unilateral movement, starting with, as you can see, the left side. So I like to incorporate unilateral movements in pretty much every workout that I do, but especially for the bag, it is important because it's such a large and apparent muscle group. If one side is just a little smaller than the other, it will be very apparent because it literally is half of your upper body from the back. benefit of an oversized shirt. You can use it as kind of a, 
a hoodie you would normally wear, but less restrictive, less warm, just as a nice cover to ensure a good pump, but without you know making you sweat before you know the start of the workout basically. So yeah. Important here with this movement is that you do go with a full range of motion so you can see my arms straighten but the back doesn't seem to be stretching out that very far and that is because I want to avoid passive stretching. So now this stretch is still under the tension of my own doing, of my own muscle, but if I would simply stretch out the entire back and go forward all the way, it would be a passive stretch and the only thing I would have to do is to hold on to the handle, which obviously is not working the back, but working the grip. So keep the stretch on the control. Don't let it go out passively. Okay guys, last working set here to the third working set. However, the weight is the same. Because it was a medium weight anyway, I'm able to do like 12 plus reps. So third working set with the same weight also causes a lot of muscle growth. And from this moment, one of my camera batteries died. So I normally have two batteries of my professional uh, system camera that I record the videos with and 4K. But now I had to resort to my phone, which does say it records in 4K. But obviously there is a difference in recording, but I still wanted to finish this workout for you guys. So this is the seal row, making sure there's no momentum, but a full contraction. Okay, it's time for the cable pullover with a wide grip, allowing for a very good contraction of the lower back, the lower lats, which is what I need to make the V-taper, at least from behind, even better. Okay guys, cable pullover time. I've actually had a time in my bodybuilding career where I did a lot of dumbbell pullovers and it created a very thick serratus muscles and big front lat thickness. Uh, you know, in the front of a bicep, in the front lat spread, which really, you know, proved for me to be beneficial in a lot of poses, even classic poses. And then I actually didn't do pullovers for a while at all because I started to feel them less and less. But now I started to love them again to really use that lat pull down bar, grabbing it just a bit wider than shoulder width, ensuring a full contraction of the lower lats, really making it an exceptional isolation movement and now it is time for some uh, rear delt flies with the dumbbells for the rear delts because i haven't been doing these either for maybe like a year straight i didn't do this because you know i thought my rear delts were big enough but if you don't do something they will simply shrink over time so never neglect a strong muscle group we're going to do the ATX bicep curl. So as you saw, this is a normal bench which you can put on an attachment like a bicep curl, a pressure curl. We're also going to be using this hip circle or uh, slingshot putting around our elbows to make sure we keep them in line with the shoulders for minimal torque on the elbow. So not going outside but going inside which is important for the uh, tendon health of your biceps. So let's go. Now this honestly is incredible equipment for anyone who wants to start a home gym or a gym in your garage. You need a bench anyway, so you might as well get an ATX bench with the possibility of attaching several things like this, like this bicep curl. You can use uh, a fly extension, an abdominal extension, a leg extension, extension, so a lot of things you can do here. But this preacher curl, it looks small, but I am six foot three and it, it's just amazing. It feels great, just like any full size preacher curl machines would feel this feels the exact same full range of motion but the biggest difference is you have free weights here so if you happen to be incredibly strong in your biceps and you max out the machines there is no way you will ever max out this one because this feels heavy okay the next movement a unilateral movement we're going to use one arm to do the bicep curls Start with the weakened arm, this time the right arm, and then the left. Let's go. 
So after doing three sets with both arms, I am doing three sets with only one arm. And this time I am starting with the right side because unfortunately the bicep on the right side, the bicep tendon near the forearm called the distal bicep tendon is being a little irritated, inflamed. I honestly don't have an idea where it, where it actually originates from because no matter which back movement I do, it doesn't hurt my bicep at all. Only when doing full range of motion bicep curls like this, when I stretch all the way down, that's only when it hurts. So during the contraction, I don't really feel much, but during the stretch I do, which unfortunately the stretch is, you know, responsible for the most muscle growth. So I'll have to deal with it for a while. And of course, doing some finishing, closing poses before heading to the post-workout meal. Okay hey guys, just finished the back workout, some simple movements, especially for the biceps because like many years, the right the bicep tendon is a little inflamed, so I have to be careful there. I don't feel it during the back exercises, but I do feel it during the bicep movements, so that's why the slow and light contractions and uh, movements. I drank both intra-workout shakes, and now it's time to go home and have the post-workout meal, the famous cream of rice with the way isolate by jet factory Alrighty, guys we are back home and as i told you we are now going to have the post workout meal cream of rice whey isolate salt and the beautiful dark chocolate let's check it out so here we have it 190 grams of cream of rice increased it by 10 grams once more because we need to keep gaining weight and as you saw i'm still pretty lean so no worries there also a banana right there and 20 grams of dark chocolate and right here is the way ice that we're using authentic way beautifully delicious taste vanilla but this is quite a sweet vanilla which means it goes very well within this cream of rice and makes it taste easy and flavorsome to consume so that was the video guys i want to thank you a lot for watching much more consistent videos are coming i'm very motivated very excited to show you guys because we are nearing about the half of the off season and the other half is coming and then a contest prep is coming as well maybe multiple contest preps because i want to take advantage of you know my younger years to make as much impact on a bodybuilding scene as possible and of course to you know end up in a high placing at the mr olympia which is my ultimate goal in classic physique but anyway thank you a lot for watching don't forget to check out vintagegenetics.com and to check out the discount code for jack factory for all of the supplements and get a nice discount on them and support me at the same time once again thank you and don't forget to stay golden